Hey guys, what's up? It's Amina. So one of the first videos I ever made on this channel was 13 things that most people don't know about Sudan. So for today, I'm going to be following up on that video, but I'm going to focus mostly on culture, which is my favorite. If you didn't watch the first video, I'll link it down below. That covered more so statistics, geography, flag, all of that. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started. Sudan is so, so diverse. So there's no way I can name every single different culture tradition that we have but I will do my best to generalize some of the main ones so the first thing that you guys should know about Sudanese people is the majority of Sudanese people are very very laid-back in general Sudanese culture is extremely laid-back if you go to Sudan that's something you'll definitely notice to the point where sometimes things can be a little bit too laid-back and things happen slowly but that's definitely something that the majority of Sudanese people share they are extremely hospitable when I say extremely hospitable I mean beyond anything that you can imagine beyond anything that exists in the Western society the culture basically has this generous hospitality ingrained in it for example if somebody were to come over to your house it doesn't matter if it's a neighbor if it's a friend if it's a family member you must first of all greet them invite them in side and you must serve them with some sort of drink and food so you can do like water a juice tea or coffee and you can do usually like candy something small but if they're staying for more than a few hours then you definitely have to serve them food as well that is very normal in Sudan the hospitality is on point they're some of the nicest people I said they I'm one of them <laughs> so these people are some of the nicest people in this world and I'm not just saying that because I'm Sudanese. A lot of people have said that as well. So the next thing, let's talk about what I am wearing. So this is called the tob in Sudan. This is the traditional clothing that a lot of women do wear. I'm not wearing this correctly. You do have to put this back part above your head. However, this is a lot harder than it looks. I'm not a master of the tob. Put this on and to be able to walk and stuff, it takes some experience. But the tobes are really, really really beautiful in Sudan. They come in so many different colors, textures. Most of the time you'll find married women wearing the toe or older women. This is very traditional and I believe that this is unique to Sudan as well. I have not seen any other country that wears the toe the same exact way that Sudanese women do. I might be wrong. Let me know down below. Now as for the men, the traditional clothing, a lot of the time what you'll see men wear is called a jalabiya, which is... <laughs> this white clothing it is pretty baggy and it's very light because in Sudan it's very very hot it comes with these pants just plain white pants and then this part probably the most important can't really see it on camera because it's gonna be so big so yeah oh my god this still smells like Sudan <laughs> it smells so good <laughs> Anyways, this is like a traditional jalabiya. It's long sleeve and then it's also long. It goes all almost all the way to the ground. The men, they wear both of these together. That's one of the traditional clothing, one of the traditional clothing because there is more than that. The next thing that you will definitely find in Sudan that I think is probably surprising, we use beds a lot in Sudan. When I say beds, I don't just mean for sleeping. We use beds as seating areas as well you'll find beds like all over even in the living room you might find like two or three even outside before you enter the house you'll find beds kind of along there's something called a hosh in Sudan which most houses have it's basically the outside area before you enter into the house and it's kind of you could think of it like as a big patio on that hosh you'll usually find like two to three beds where people sit talk whatever and then at night one of the cool things is because the weather is so hot at night the weather is the perfect temperature where a lot of people sleep outside on the hush at night I was kind of a scaredy cat when I was in Sudan but I tried it one time and it was pretty amazing you get that fresh air in your face so that was great but I was kind of scared <laughs> so when it comes to music in Sudan just like the people Sudanese music for the most part is very laid back there's not very many fast songs and when I say fast songs I mean get up and party 
party and dance type of music. It matches the vibe of the Sudanese people. Very laid back, very chill, very calming, very nice too. <laughs> Another thing when it comes like with music, party celebrations, for weddings usually, you'll hear this like the sound that women make to celebrate. I'm not gonna even attempt to do it. I think I could do it actually a little bit, but I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna insert a little clip of how that sounds. <laughs> Might be alarming for people if you've never heard that before. <laughs> but yeah, it's okay, nothing's going on. That's the traditional customary way to like celebrate. Next thing I'm gonna talk about is gold. So in Sudan, actually the jewelry of choice is gold. I don't know why I'm rolling up my sleeves because I do not have on gold from Sudan. I wish I did, but Sudan has gold. So the women there, oh my God, have some of the most beautiful gold jewelry you will ever see, especially when they get married. They they have their arms full of gold bracelets here and here and their neck. When I say gold, I'm not talking about 10 karat, 14 karat. I'm talking about real gold. 22 karat, 24 karat, 21 maybe is like the least. I don't think I've ever seen less than 21 karat in Sudan. Like that's not even gold for Sudanese people. So definitely that yellow gold you'll find in Sudan. It's so, so beautiful. So next we have henna. So henna is basically like, like a temporary dye that people put on their skin in Sudan and on their hair but mostly on their skin and it'll fade away after a couple of weeks. So henna is found in a lot of places in the world but what's unique in Sudan is that the henna is black. Yes it is pitch black so it shows up really nice on our skin because we're obviously darker and the design of the henna in Sudan is so so beautiful. Whenever I went to Sudan every single time I would get my henna done for no reason. Even if there was nothing, no occasion, usually you get it done for a wedding or something like that. Even if there was no occasion, I get my henna done. And then before I leave to come back to the US, I get my henna done again. There's a little bit of difference if you're married, you do like both of your hands and your feet. If you're not married, you kind of stick with your hands. You could tell the difference between a married woman's henna and a non-married woman's henna. And in Sudan, the men do henna as well, the married men for their wedding. So they'll have henna on their hands and on their feet too. All right, so when it comes to weddings, man, Sudanese weddings are some of the most intricate and detailed things that I've ever seen. And I'm not even gonna try to get to that in this video, but if you guys want me to do a dedicated video on everything that happens in a full, like full blown Sudanese wedding from start to finish, I will do that because it's so interesting. Anyways, let's keep moving on. So another thing that you will find very, very common in Sudan is called Bahu. This is what Bahur looks like. It's basically just oil perfume mixed with this wood and then you light this on fire with charcoal and it makes, oh my God, it smells so good. It makes your whole house smell so amazing. It's a little bit stronger than like candles for me. That's why I like to do Bahur better. And the smell is just like literally Sudan in a jar. Now, as far as food, typically everybody eats together. Sudan is very very family oriented until this day. There's not really such an individualistic lifestyle. Everybody does things together, including eating food. So usually the food is served on one big silver plate and then you have little dishes within this plate. You sit in a circle around the plate with your family and you break off a piece of bread and you just eat. That's traditionally how a lot of people eat and a lot of people still eat on the floor in Sudan. In Sudan, we eat a lot of bread, so of course we have 
have our main bread, which just looks like your typical bread. But then we also have like kisra, which is made of sorghum flour. Kisra is this very, very thin bread, super, super thin. You can almost see through it. And we use that to eat mulahs. So mulahs are kind of like stews and you have different flavors of mulahs made out of different things. So you could have like okra, you can have an okra mulah or you can have a meat mulah. And then you use the kisra to kind of like use it as a spoon to kind of pick up the mulah and put it in your mouth and eat it. We eat with our hands too. Did I mention that? I mean, that's a given. The next bird that we have is called gurasa. So gurasa is the one that's very similar to Ethiopian or Eritrean injera. It looks the same. It's a little bit thicker than kisra, kind of the same thickness as injera. Then we also have asida, which is this interesting <laughs> bread. It's kind of like made in the bowl. So it takes the shape of a bowl and I don't really know how to describe it. So I'm just gonna put a picture so you guys can see what that looks like. That is more like mushy, but you use it the same way, just as a bread. So you have your mulahs, you have your breads and food, of course. You cannot be Sudanese if you don't like food. That's a must. I think all Sudanese will love food. I think Sudan makes some of the best food in the world. Not being biased, I've literally tasted the best food in the world in Sudan. And juices are very popular too, freshly squeezed juices. And Sudan has something called karkade, which is hibiscus. I'm not gonna say anything because a lot of people are territorial over their karkade, but it is very pungent, okay? <laughs> and then also in Sudan, a lot of people drink tea. So yeah, tea and coffee is very common. However, I think more people are tea drinkers. I think we drink tea a lot. Tea with milk traditionally and a lot of sugar. So anyways, that's it for this video. I don't wanna make this too long. I'm just gonna go ahead and stop right here, even though I have a lot more. If you guys want a part two, I'll keep going, talk about more culture and get a little bit more in depth. And also I'm curious, you guys let me know down below if any of the things that I talked about are the exact same way in your country. Let me know down below. Let me know which country it is too. That's it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I will see you guys all in my next video. Bye.